In the world of technology, things are rapidly evolving and changing. Because of this, we often look at a piece of hardware or a device that's just 5 years old and consider it to be ancient. The same rule applies in the PC hardware space. If you were to compare a flagship GPU from 2022 to one from 2017, there is a sizable performance jump. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that the latter is totally useless. Instead, I've noticed this trend over the years where more and more people are holding on to their old GPUs rather than upgrade even past that 5 year mark. We're going to be delving into this and discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Being part of this PC hardware YouTube community, I'm often finding myself getting enveloped by a habit to keep up with the latest and greatest. I believe it's a big part of what drives many channels on this platform, and it's mainly because you, the audience, have made it clear you'd like to know what's the next big thing. I'll make a video on the channel talking about some rumors or leaks surrounding a future piece of tech, and it'll typically get decent engagement. However, I'll spend days if not weeks testing or benchmarking a CPU using different configurations or overclock settings, you know, focusing on the here and now, but sometimes those videos don't end up doing as well. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Humans are curious, and these corporations are quite smart at trapping the consumer in this cycle of keeping them on edge about what the next big thing is. It's a big part of their business model. But I mean, who doesn't want to know what new piece of technology NVIDIA or AMD are working on that will surpass their previous generation and what kind of new features it will bring which can change the way we play our games. I find it quite intriguing to think about and discuss how they're going to break through the limits, but more importantly, whether or not those upgrades are actually worth it. Though as I said, it's easy to get lost in the waves of new release cycles, hardware releases, and sometimes as a YouTube hardware reviewer, I'll admit I can get a bit disconnected as to what your general average everyday consumer is experiencing in their daily lives. So we're going to be shifting our focus and discuss why old hardware such as graphics cards from 7 years ago are still prevalent for a lot of people even today. I was prompted to make this video because recently Gamers Nexus had posted a video on their channel where they revisited the GTX 1080 Ti, a graphics card that many, myself included, considered to be the GOAT. I got a GTX 1080 Ti shortly after its release and I was quite satisfied with it, as it was an absolute beast in gaming and for a while on the channel all I was doing was testing out various games and doing many specific performance showcases. I ended up having to RMA it back in late 2019 and EVGA had replaced it with an RTX 2080, but had that not have happened, then I probably would have still been using it until late last year, where I eventually upgraded my personal rig with a 3090. The GTX 1080 Ti was a misstep for Nvidia, for sure, one that I'm sure they won't be repeating. The performance and the bang for the buck it offered at its price point haunted them for the next few generations. It's definitely time for something new. Something that's 35% faster than a GTX 1080 the world's number one gaming graphics card. Something new that is faster than Titan X. Let's call it the ultimate, the ultimate G-Force. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. <laughs> Leaps tall buildings with a single bound. 5% faster than 1080. Faster than Titan X and then overclocked just now to over two gigahertz with an out-of-the-box stock fan. And all of that for $6.99. And for $6.99. Don't throw your wallets up here. This didn't just apply to the 1080 Ti, but a lot of the 10 series cards were touted as having excellent performance per dollar. Imagine if Nvidia released the RTX 4090 at $899, which is basically what the 1080 Ti would have cost today adjusted for inflation. Considering the positive reception the 4090 got at its original MSRP of $1599, if it had launched at $900, it would have looked like an absolute steal. People would have just lost their minds. But this is what the 1080 Ti was, just impeccable performance per dollar 
dollar, a huge leap over the previous gen without an enormous price hike. The RTX 20 series which followed was considered to be a disappointing generation simply because compared to the 10 series, the performance improvements weren't substantial. What were substantial however were the price hikes and at the time its main selling point was real-time ray tracing and DLSS which were underwhelming due to the lack of adoption. It wasn't until the RTX 30 series came out with options like the 3080 at 699 that offered a substantial jump over the 1080 Ti. Jensen even said during the announcement that to all my Pascal Gamer friends, it's now time to upgrade. Circling back to the GN video, they showed some modern game benchmarks which gives you some insight as to how the 1080 Ti is performing in today's games 7 years later. And what's also nice is that they have included the GTX 1080 along with a plethora of current generation and previous gen cards from Nvidia and AMD. 7 years is a very long time in the tech world. At this stage, it's expected that the Pascal King isn't going to be offering chart-topping performance. With that said, it's still impressive to see how in modern games today, it's still able to provide a playable experience. Granted, the user is going to have to settle with compromises, which we will talk about more in a moment. Furthermore, we, you can see how in their Dying Light 2 benchmark, even the 1080 is still able to provide the user with a playable experience. With that said, I know I'm focusing on some high-end options from that era. With the price points they were commanding, as a consumer, you'd be expecting them to last for numerous years before they're just not able to offer the user a playable experience and they simply can't run the games coming out. But like I said, 7 years is a long time and for it to be delivering this level of performance is still quite astonishing. Along with that, I was doing some research and looking at various benchmarks that other users share on YouTube of mid-range and mainstream GPUs from that era and surprisingly, they're still holding up. If you weren't aware, AMD's best gaming graphics card on the Steam hardware survey is still an RX 580. There are loads of PC gamers out there that are using this card. Cards like the GTX 1060, 1070, they're still there and they're still holding up quite well for numerous users. Of course, this does also come down to the type of games that they're playing. For example, a game like Alan Wake 2 which came out late last year and was known for being quite demanding but visually it is quite the stunning game. If you were to play that on an RX 580, even using lower settings and techniques like upscaling your performance still wouldn't be adequate and you'd, ha you'd have to go down to such a low resolution the game would look like a blurry mess and for titles like this where the visuals are a big selling point you'd want to play it with it looking decent. Along with that when it had initially launched it didn't work too well with GPUs like the 10 series and AMD's RX 5000 series or prior due to the lack of support for mesh shaders but they did come out with an update last month and Digital Foundry tested various 10 series cards and saw a pretty large boost where now the 1080 Ti and even the 1070 would give you a playable experience but again there were compromises made here because they were using PS5 performance quality preset but that is reasonable and is to be expected at this point. Anyone who's thinking that they have a 1080 Ti show, so I should still be able to max out my games in this day and age is they're only deluding themselves. But Alan Wake 2 is a niche example, and most games that are coming out where the goal is to capture a large player base are being designed with old GPUs in mind, especially when you look at games that are holding the top spots on the Steam charts. You'll see many of them are multiplayer games and they will work fine on old hardware. Helldivers 2 is a great example. You can attain playable experiences on cards like the GTX 1070, which is a mid-range card from 2016, and the RX 480 and 580, a GPU which was a tier lower from the same era. We're talking about 8-year-old graphics cards being able to run these modern games just fine. Look at Pal World, which was another huge game we covered on the channel and why it was so popular amongst PC gamers. One of those reasons was because it ran so well on old hardware, which therefore gives it much better accessibility. You're not going to be maxing out games, let's not have those kinds of expectations. But also keep in mind that when we talk about low and medium settings of today's games, they're actually very similar to the high or very high settings of games from 2016 or 2017. But circling back to those games I just mentioned, you can see how their focal point wasn't to push graphics or to sell hardware, but there were other aspects of the game, like the co-op multiplayer, that is what attracted players. Along with that, should the user still need an extra kick for their hardware, Upscaling has also come in clutch for many users. It's also one of the main driving forces as to why these old GPUs have lasted their users so long and will continue to perform adequately. And on top of that, you can throw on frame generation, but this one I can find to be a hit or miss. 
Now think about this, what do you think would have happened if someone who owned a GPU from 2008, like a GTX 280, tried to play modern games in 2016 or 2017? Some of those games probably wouldn't even run due to the DX12 incompatibility, and for the ones that would, the performance would be downright atrocious, you'd be running at very low resolutions, and it'd be unplayable. I even tried to find benchmarks of someone playing something like Battlefield 1 on a GTX 280, but I actually couldn't find anything, and for the ones that did retest this card, they were still benchmarking games from that era, which then kind of defeats the whole purpose of a revisit. But then this also kind of got me thinking. There's been so much negativity surrounding new game launches these days. I feel like there's a lot of people who are just choosing to ignore the new games coming out, and they're just content with playing older titles. I know for a fact that for myself, I have a huge backlog of games, so even if I, for some reason, just couldn't upgrade my GPU and I still had to stick with my 2080, I wouldn't be mad or sad at all because there's a huge backlog of games I can still go through and keep myself occupied with where I wouldn't need the latest and greatest. But anyways, going back to the topic on hand, if you go back to that era of 2016 or 2017 and tried to find someone using something like a GTX 280, you'd be hard pressed to do so. It kind of goes to show you how quickly people had upgraded or how much faster they were upgrading. Whereas now you can still find many gaming with GPUs from 2016, but to be fair, the PC gaming market had already grown so much more, so there's that to take into account. The main takeaway from this is that graphics cards from these past few generations are lasting longer than what we were seeing years ago in the 2000s or early 2010s, and people are not upgrading as frequently. This is because technology, software, and graphics were advancing at a much more rapid pace, and we were also seeing much, much larger jumps than what we get today. Today, a 30% improvement is considered to be a generational leap, whereas before, it was normal to see 80% plus performance jumps. When it comes to graphics and the games themselves, I feel like we've reached a limit to how much people are wanting their games to be realistic. This doesn't mean that there won't be devs out there that are going to continue to push that graphics envelope, there definitely will be. You can bet your money that when CD Projekt Red comes out with the next Cyberpunk or the Witcher remake that they're working on, that graphics is going to be a big selling point and appeal for those games. But if it turns out that you're going to need the latest and greatest to get a fully enjoyable experience out of it, you know, we're talking about cards probably reaching $2,000 at that point, they're going to be played by a niche crowd. If you were to ask me if we had decided to stop it right here and say, okay, we're not going to be advancing graphics anymore, and instead we're just going to be focusing on other aspects of the game, that would be totally fine with me. Recently, I had finally gotten around to doing my second playthrough of Cyberpunk 2077 and completed the Phantom Liberty DLC. I ended up playing it on my main desktop, which has a 3090, and with the frame gen mod, I was able to use high settings with path tracing enabled, and I got around 80 to 100 FPS average, though it felt more like a 60 to 70 fps experience because that's just the way frame gen works which for me in a single player game is totally fine now i was quite astonished by the way the game looked using path tracing because the first time i had played it i didn't use any ray tracing at all my computer just wouldn't handle it so i was glad to have the opportunity to experience the higher fidelity in my second playthrough with that said after a couple hours you start to get over the whole aspect of playing games with realistic graphics and my main focus was actually on the game itself the story quest gameplay and combat another game in recent years that i thoroughly enjoyed was elden ring and while it did have some pretty decent graphics it didn't look that much better than dark souls 3 which came out in 2016 but i had absolutely no problems with that because i ended up being so fixated on the game itself exploring the world fighting bosses and doing invasions where pretty graphics wasn't even a thought in my mind this is one of the reasons why popular twitch multiplayer titles attract such large player bases take a look at the steam charts and take a look at the multiplayer games hardly any of them are pushing ultra realistic graphics they can run just fine on graphics cards like a gtx 1070 or rx 580 and even for games that do allow the user to run realistic settings like ray tracing, I find that hardly anybody does because they would rather prioritize higher FPS than visuals. Who is actually out there playing Warzone or Fortnite using ray tracing? I think it's safe to say that the consensus now is that graphics are not selling games anymore. People are over this whole photorealism aspect in gaming and just want something that is fun and engaging and will work great on their hardware. I think AAA devs are also starting to realize this and you'll probably be seeing games 
games coming out that aren't going to be appearing leaps and bounds better than what's out today or what came out a few years ago because there's just no incentive for them to do so. I definitely think that they can still find a good balance though, and part of the appeal I have in PC gaming is customizability and the ability to tune your own settings. Sure, you want the best graphics? turn up all the effects and turn everything to high, turn on path tracing. But I find even if you were to roll with a mixture of medium settings, games can still look totally acceptable and your performance is just so much better. I did not make a video about this last year highlighting how I think ultra settings are stupid for the vast majority of users. Resolution is also a big part of the reason why graphics are lasting longer. Once 1080p came around, I had no idea that it would remain as such a common resolution for such a long time. But here we are over a decade later and it's still the resolution the majority are content with and that's also because you don't need to upgrade as often and can get away with keeping the hardware for longer. And then circling back to features like upscaling and frame generation, these features are doing a great job at breathing new life into older hardware. Which is interesting because if the ultimate goal for these companies is to sell hardware then they probably shouldn't be giving out these kinds of features that make people hold on to their old hardware for as long as possible. On the flip side though, these manufacturers themselves also realize that selling hardware based on FPS figures and graphics alone isn't going to cut it anymore. Hence we see so much AI and LLM features being pushed even to the average consumers. I mean Nvidia fully has a video on their gaming GeForce channel showcasing to gamers that they can run their own AI chat locally. Guys, it's time to realize that gaming graphics isn't the only way they're going to be selling their hardware, and if that's the stage we're at, then this just goes to show you older hardware is going to start lasting longer. To be clear, I don't want this video's message to be that I'm saying new GPU sales are atrocious and everyone is still gaming with their old GPUs because if you look at the recent earnings reports from these companies, then you'll see they did sell lots of GPUs. But that person who's upgrading from an older GPU, it may not have been necessarily because their old GPU was straight up unusable aside from if it actually died or something. And also, let's address the fact that GPUs have gotten so expensive over the years, but I've already ranted enough about that on this channel numerous times over this past year, so... I'll spare you guys from the venting. In conclusion, while the tech industry continually pushes for innovation, there's a noticeable trend of users holding onto their older hardware longer. Thanks to impressive longevity and performance, games designed with compatibility for aging GPUs and advancements like upscaling extend their lifespan, challenging the need for frequent upgrades. Recent earning reports show healthy GPU sales, but the shift highlights a change in the consumer behavior towards prioritizing fun and engagement over cutting edge graphics. This evolving mindset emphasizes adaptability and longevity in the gaming community, marking a significant shift in my opinion for the PC hardware landscape. Alrighty guys, so that's gonna do it for this one. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.